So now we're going to take and sew the head in place. So make sure you have the plenty of stuffing that you need for the head and you're going to put your yarn on the tapestry needle and you want to make sure that the color changes are even so you don't want one side to be like that and the heads up here you want to make sure that the head is centered on the black portion so that the color changes on the side right here and right here are even and then the other thing you want to do is make sure that the nose is facing straight and then you're going to line up the head with the front portion of the color change. So after I had everything lined up the way that I wanted then I just took my tapestry needle and don't worry if you skip a few stitches this first round is to secure the head in the position you don't want it to move as you secure it. So you can go back and forth just putting a couple of stitches and making sure that the head doesn't move and that it's in the position that you want it to remain and that the nose is straight. So you're just putting a couple of stitches to secure the front of the head. So once you've put a few stitches in the front you can turn the head and you can get your black colored yarn to secure the back part of the neck. So any part of the head or neck has the black portion, you're going to use your black colored yarn to secure it in place. And then you can secure any area with the tan colored yarn with the tan colored yarn to the body. So now I pretty much secured the back of the neck really well and I'm just going back now and just sewing going right in the neck and through the body and back up through the neck and I just keep making those stitches all the way around and you can add more yarn if you need to but just always use the same colored yarn tough area there. Always use the same colored yarn as the head, the portion that you're sewing on the head. So I'm going to come out the front here. And again I'm still always making sure that the nose and the head are straight. But you want to make sure that the head is really secure so it's not going to be pulled off easily. So you can see how I'm just going in and out. going into the body and then back up through the neck. So I went through the neck into the body and back out through the neck and I'm just putting little stitches. You don't want to put big stitches so you make little stitches. You can make big stitches on the wrong side but when you're when you're when you have the front or the area that's showing on the outside you want small stitches on the outside and you can make large stitches on the wrong side. So you see how the stitch here is small even though I'm coming out over there. So go ahead and finish securing the neck and then come back. And this is what my head looks like after I've sewn it in place. So now you can set your dog aside for now. We're going to make the legs. Now for the paws, you're going to start with your tan colored yarn. And we're going to start with the magic circle. So you just drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, and then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers twice. I'm using my 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. I'm going to bring up a loop. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. And then I'm going to place six single crochet into the magic circle, just like we've done before.
And then we're going to close the magic circle. And then just turn your work and you're going to place two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a stitch count of 12. Then we're going to start our increase rounds. We're going to be making a total of seven increase rounds. We're going to stop after one single crochet into seven stitches and then two single crochet into the eighth stitch. So for our first increase round, we're going to be making one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch repeating that pattern all the way around. Then one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch repeating that pattern all the way around. Then one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the sixth stitch repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then we only have two more increase rounds. The next increase round is one single crochet into six stitches and then two single crochet into the seventh stitch. Then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then the last increase round is one single crochet into seven stitches and then two single crochet into the eighth stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have a total of 54 stitches in the round. And you're going to take and move your yarn marker up and you're going to make only one round of one single crochet into every stitch around. So only one single crochet in every stitch for only one round and then come back. So now you should be back to the yarn marker and we're going to form the front of the paw now. So you're going to take and move the yarn marker up to where you left off and then you're going to single crochet two together 16 times. So you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for single crochet two together. That's one. Two. I'm going to show you two more. three, four. So go ahead, continue making your single crochet two stitches together until you have a total of 16. So now you should have a total of 16 single crochet two stitches together and you can see how you have a little front portion of the paw forming. Then you can make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches so when you get back to the yarn marker come back and I'll show you what to do next so one single crochet in every stitch up to the yarn marker so now you should have a total of 38 stitches in the round and you're going to take and move your yarn marker up where you left off and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for only one round. 
So one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. So now you're back to the yarn marker and I'm going to show you how to make the bottom portion of the foot now. So this is what your work should look like so far. And I'm going to show you how to make the heart and then the four paw pads for the foot. This is a finished foot or an end leg paw. So now you're going to break out your six millimeter crochet hook. You can set your foot aside for now or paw aside for now and go ahead and get whatever color yarn that you're using for your paw prints. I'm using my um, Lion Brand Pound of Love pastel or light pink and again I'm using my six millimeter crochet hook and we're going to start with the magic circle so now you should be a pro with your magic circle getting ready and go ahead and bring up a loop for your slip knot and then you're going to go under those two loops again and bring up a loop and this time you're going to make a single crochet so you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both loops and that's going to count as your first portion of the first treble stitch so we're going to chain three one two three that's going to count as your first treble stitch and we're going to need four more into the magic circle so you're going to yarn over twice you're going to go into the magic circle you're going to bring up a loop so now you have four loops on your hook you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through only two loops now you have three loops on your crochet hook you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops and then you have two loops remaining go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through those two remaining loops and you just completed your second treble stitch so now we need three more yarn over twice go into the magic circle bring up a loop yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two so I'm going to go ahead and make the rest with you so I have four, I'm going to make one more and now we're going to make four double crochet. So you yarn over, go into the magic circle, bring up a loop, yarn over, go through two, yarn over and go through two to complete a double crochet. So now we need three more. So yarn over, go into the magic circle, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. So now I'm just going to make two more with you, two more double crochet. I have to get more yarn. So I have two double crochet, I need two more for a total of four. Then you're going to make a chain of two. One, two. Then I'm going to make four more double crochet. And what's nice about the magic circle is you can move the stitches over if you need to. <laughs> My yarn ball. I like the ones that pull through the center, but that's all right. So I have four double crochet, and like I said, you can move the stitches over if you need to, which is nice. So now I'm going to make five treble crochet into the magic circle.
one more and then you're going to end with a double crochet so I'm going to end with a double crochet so now you can take your forefinger and thumb and just like you did with your other magic circle you're going to have the two loops of yarn on the opposite side pull on one if it doesn't close let go and just pull on the other one and then you just gently close the center then you just take that other loose yarn end and pull on that and then you're going to take and make a slip stitch into the base of that first single crochet that you made into the magic circle. So you just get your hook and go right into that first single crochet, yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the heart onto the bottom of the foot or paw. So now you can close up the center of the magic circle, just gently pull on that loose yarn end on the back and then you're going to take that where we finished off and get your tapestry needle put it onto that long end that you left for sewing and then you're going to bring the loose yarn end through the center of the heart and what that does is it will help bring the heart into shape. So you see how I shaped it by pulling it right through the center. Then you can take and sew the paw onto the bottom of, I mean the heart onto the bottom of the paw. I'm going to take that short loose yarn end and bring that through first. So now you want to get your paw and I'm going to show you how to position the heart. So you want to make sure that you have the front of the paw and bring that up towards the top. And then you're going to use the magic circle as a guide and you want to make sure that you're centered with the front of the paw. So you don't want your heart crooked. You want it facing the front. So where we made those single crochet two stitches together to form the front of the paw, you want to find the center. And then you can also follow the line too. There's a little bit of a line there where we had the increases. So you can use that too. And then you're just going to place the heart, that little triangular portion of the heart, you're going to place it right up against the magic circle. So it's real easy. Just place it right up to, here's the magic circle. And then you just place your heart right up to it, right in the V portion. I'm just going to bring my yarn piece down. And then also, again, I'm centered with the front of the paw. Then you can take and bring your yarn through to the inside of the paw and then just get your other yarn end for sewing make sure you're positioned again and then you can take and sew the paw in place. So I sew all along the edge of the heart. So go ahead and sew your heart in place and then I'll show you how to make the four pads, the other four pads.
And that's what it looks like after I sewed in place. Now I'm going to show you how to make the pad portion. They're all made the same. You need four, you need four of them. And now I switched back to my 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. So make sure you've switched back to your 3.75 millimeter. And again, you're going to use the magic circle. And you're going to bring up a loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to make a single crochet. A half double crochet, yarn over, go into the magic circle, bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a half double crochet. Then you're going to make three double crochet. It's going to get a lot of yarn here. So three double crochet, yarn over, go into the magic circle, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So you need two more double crochets. Then you need a half double crochet. Two single crochet. A half double crochet. Three double crochet. a half double crochet then a single crochet then you're just going to take and close it just like you've done before for your magic circles and then take and pull on that loose yarn end. Then you're going to take and make a slip stitch into that first single crochet that you made. So just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the pad onto the paw. So now you can take and close the center if you need to. Just turn it over and pull on that loose yarn end. And you have your oval shaped paw. You just need a total of four of these. So now you should have your four pads. Just take one of them. And I usually start with the loose yarn end from the magic circle and not the one where I finished off. But it doesn't matter which one. Then take and line it up. Now the first paw that I sew on is right the two that go above the heart. So I just kind of position it where I want it and then bring the yarn through and then take the, the longer yarn end for sewing. Now remember there's four of them, that's why I start with the two above the heart and then I just sew along the edge. securing it into place. 
Then I take and sew the second one in place. And you want to make sure you don't sew the portion where we left off. We're going to return to that for finishing the paw. So you can see how I positioned the second paw and then I just sew along the edge. Then I just take and place the outer edged ones and sew those in place. And you can see how I place it right next to one of the center ones. The same thing will be on the other side. This is what your paw should look like when you're finished. Then you're going to take, you're still using your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. You're going to go right where you left off, place your yarn marker, and you're going to make eight single crochet two stitches together. So there's one. Two. Go ahead, finish eight total single crochet two stitches together. After you finish eight single crochet two stitches together, make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches. So now you have a total of 30 stitches in the round and you're going to move your yarn marker up and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 22 rounds. And you can see how that last round with the single crochet two stitches together made a really nice paw. It's looking really good. So go ahead, move your yarn marker up and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 22 rounds and then come back. So you can see how I finished 22 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. Then you can remove your yarn marker and then go ahead and stuff the paw and the leg with craft stuffing. So this is what mine looks like. So you can see I put the craft stuffing into the paw. And then now I'm ready to close the leg. So you're just going to take your crochet hook and then place your yarn marker right where you left off. And you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches. And then you're going to single crochet two stitches together for a decreased stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into three stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. Then move your yarn marker up and make one single crochet into two stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. Repeating that pattern all the way around. Then one single crochet into one stitch and then single crochet two stitches together. Repeating that pattern all the way around and you can see how you're starting to close. Then you can take and remove the yarn marker and again just like we've done before we're going to slip stitch it closed but first you can add more craft stuffing if you need to. I'm going to add a little bit more in mine. Then you can take and just single crochet two stitches together until it's almost closed just like we did for the body. Just single crochet all two stitches together all the way around until you're almost closed. So this will be my last one. Then I'm going to slip stitch it closed. So I'm just going to skip a stitch and then I'm going to the next stitch across and slip stitching it closed.
So this one I'm just going in the next stitch and then yarn over and pull it through both loops. Then I'm just going to go across and then that should close it up. Yep, yeah, all closed. Then you just yarn over to finish off and then just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So again, kind of shape your paw and then you can take your tapestry needle and then just go right in where you finished off and then come out anywhere. Just pull on that and it kind of closes that up nicely. And then you're going to need four of these. And this is what mine looks like. So go ahead and finish making four of yours. So now you're going to want to put your outfit on your dog if you're using the outfit and it has a velcro in the front so you can open it up and then place it onto the dog. Then you just want to position it so that the tie is in the front and then just see where the arms are going to fall. Then you can get your black colored yarn onto your, if you're using the large upholstery needle, I use my 12 inch one, but you can use your smaller one too. It's just a little bit more difficult getting through the body. But I just wanted to show you where I placed my arms. So from the black area, I counted in, counting the first black round, one, two, three, four, five, and then I went one, two, three rounds up. So around this area is where I put my um, needle through for securing the arms in place. So now you're going to go ahead and grab two of your paws. Make sure that when you attach them, the paws need to be facing forward. And then I take my upholstery needle or tapestry needle and I go through the top of the paw first. And I usually count down around from the edge of the top, I count down one, two, three, about four, and then I go right in the side of the paw. And then you're going to come back out on the opposite side at the same level. And then I try to come through the center of the crochet hole. And then you just bring the yarn through, and you want to make sure that you leave a little bit of loose yarn end for pulling and securing the legs in place. Then you're going to go right through the body and like I said I went five rounds in and three rounds up. And then you're going to come out on the opposite side at the same level. So the rounds may be a little bit different as you can see, one side's a little bit higher up, so make sure that you are at the same level when you come out on the opposite side. And it looks like I'm going to be one starting from this area here. I'm going to count in one, two, three, four, five. So I'm not actually counting that first round of black yarn. And then I'm probably going to come out that first round instead of the three rounds up. So you can see that that's where it would be symmetrical for my dog. So you're going to come out about that area. Make sure you don't poke yourself. So there, I'm coming out at the area that I want to be and you can see how it, it's even across which is what you want and then you just bring the yarn through the body and then I usually leave about one to two inches between the paw and the body and again you want to make sure that the paw is facing forward you don't want to attach your legs on backwards so then you grab your other paw and then you just go through at the same level through the side and then come out the opposite side at the same level.
Then you're ready to go back through. So I went out the opposite leg. So you're going to go about a stitch over or under. So one stitch over away from where you came out. So it can be anywhere that's a stitch over. I'm just going to go about one stitch below. And then go back out the opposite side. And I'm going to go about a stitch over on the opposite side. And then come back through. And then I'm going to go right back through the body. So again on the body, I'm going to go a stitch over. So you can see where I went in. About a stitch over from where I exited on the body. And then I'm going to go right back through the body. And then I'm going to come out about a stitch over from where I went in on the other side. And try not to gr bring your needle through the yarn. You want to keep the yarn segments separate as much as possible. Otherwise it's going to be hard to cinch the legs to the body later if you don't. And so you can see where I'm leaving about two inches, two to two and a half inches between the body and the legs. And then I'm going to go through the other leg, about a stitch over. And then go back through. And then I do this whole process one more time. So I like to go through twice. So go ahead and go through one more time if you want it to be really secure. And then come back. So now you can see that I have four strands of yarn between each paw and the body. Then you're just going to take and pull on the two ends and be careful that you don't snap the yarn. So if you meet any resistance, just pull on one and then pull on the other one. And be careful you don't snap the yarn. So just pull gently on one and then the other and you can see how the arms will cinch against the body. And then just pull both of them and cinch as close as you want the legs to the body as possible and then tie a knot. After you have the arms attached and you can see how they move back and forth, you can take those loose yarn ends and I take my smaller tapestry needle or darning needle and then I just take those loose yarn ends and then you just go right in where you finished or tied a knot and then you just come out along the inside of the arm and that buries the loose yarn end. So go ahead and bury your loose yarn ends. Now for the back leg I just wanted to show you where I went in. So you want to make sure you're in line with the front leg. So you can see that the front leg is in line right about here is where I just started using the black yarn to close. So I'm about two rows in. You can see where I placed my tapestry needle in. So you're going to go in at that level and then come out at the same level on the opposite side for the back legs and you're going to attach them the same way that you did the front legs. So again, make sure that the paw is facing forward. So this is what the back looks like after I attach the back legs. So now I'm going to put the pants on so I can see where I'm going to place the tail and then I'll show you how to make the tail. And as you can see, his pants look adorable. They fit him perfectly. And this is where his tail will come out. Now for the tail, you're going to start with your black colored yarn and you're going to drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize and then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers. Hold it in place with your pinky and thumb just like you've done before. 
I'm using my 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. I'm going under those two loops to bring up a loop for my slip knot. So just yarn over and go through that loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to place eight single crochet into the magic circle. Then you're going to close the magic circle just like you've done before. And then you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch around. Go ahead and get your yarn marker to help keep track of the rounds. And then you're just going to place one single crochet into every stitch around. Make sure you get into the right first stitch. So my first stitch is actually right here. So you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch around for three rounds. And remember we have eight stitches in the round. We're not increasing or decreasing yet. So go ahead, keep making one single crochet in every stitch until you've completed three rounds and then come back. Now as you're making your rounds, make sure that you're folding it so that the loose yarn end is on the wrong side or the inside of the little cup that you're creating. And you can pull on that little loose yarn end and that will close up the center of the magic circle or the tip of the tail. And then you just continue making one single crochet in every stitch around until you've completed three rounds. So after you finish your three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, go ahead and move your yarn marker up and we're going to make one increase round. So for this increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into one stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around. Back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. So now you should have 12 stitches in the round and you can take your yarn marker and remove it and if you need to you can tuck the loose yarn end into the center of the cup of the tail. Then you can take and move the yarn marker where you left off and you're going to make only one single crochet into every stitch around for a total of three rounds again. So one single crochet in every stitch for three rounds. So now you can take and remove the yarn marker and now you're going to take and join your beige colored yarn. So just take and put your crochet hook into the next stitch over and bring up a loop. You have two loops on the hook Go ahead and bring the yarn, the beige colored yarn through, or the tan color. And then you're just going to take and tie a knot. You're not going to cut the previous colored yarn because we're going to carry it as we crochet. So now, we're going to crochet one single crochet in every round with the beige colored yarn and then you're going to carry the black colored yarn as you crochet. And then you can change colors whenever you want for the color design on your tail.
So for mine, I'm going to make half the tail a beige color and then half black. And I'm, so I'm about half now. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So now I'm going to change colors. I'm going to drop my beige color, pick up the black colored yarn, and then I'm going to start crocheting with the black colored yarn. And just like on the body, I'm going to switch colors when I have one of the black colored stitches remaining before the color change. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So now I have one stitch left with the black colored yarn. So I'm going to drop the black colored yarn, pick up the beige or tan colored yarn, and then just crochet around with the beige colored yarn. Now remember you don't want to mess up your stitch count so if you need to add a yarn marker to help you make sure that you still have a stitch count of 12 when you're done you can do that as well. So then when you get to the opposite side you're going to have one of the beige colored stitches left you drop the beige colored yarn, pick up the black colored yarn, and then you just resume one single crochet in every stitch until the next color change. And that way you'll have half of the beige on the underside and then the black colored yarn on the top side of the tail. So for mine, I made 19 rounds where the color change started. So counting, starting here, one, two, three, four, and then all the way up to 19 rounds. Then you can take and cut the beige colored yarn and then you're just going to take and tie a knot so that the beige colored yarn doesn't come undone. Then you're just going to take and make one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds. So one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds. And remember you should still have a stitch count of 12 for the round. Then after you finish the three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, you can make a slip stitch into the next stitch over and then just finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the tail onto the back of the dog's body. So now you just want to take and make sure that you know where the opening is for the pants if you're using pants and then just kind of pull that pant area down so you can sew the tail in place. You want to make sure you keep track of the area for sewing the tail. And then that's where my tail is going to go. Then you just take and sew all around the base of the tail, making sure that it's nice and secure. Then, after you finish sewing the tail in place, you can bring the tail through the pants and it fits perfectly. Then you can take and just put the hat on and then if you want to, you can use some shades. So at Build-A-Bear, they have these cute, adorable little shades that'll fit your dog and they're not that expensive, about $4.50 at Build-A-Bear Workshop. This is what they look like. And then they just fit right on your dog's nose perfectly.